So hi, welcome to Design Spark Ask the Expert. Today I'm joined by Sylvia Fong from uh, Belden. Sylvia is the Senior Solution Consultant Manager at Belden. Hi Sylvia, welcome to Design Spark. Would you like to say hello to our, our viewers? Yeah, definitely. Um, hi, I'm Sylvia Fong. I'm leading the solution consulting team in the Silicon Valley location for Belden and as part of the Customer Innovation Center. I'm very happy to be here. Very, um, very glad we have this opportunity to talk, Greg. Great stuff. So what we're going to be talking today about is future proof and your Ethernet connection. Um, but Sylvia, first, just tell me a little bit more about your, your role and how you originally got into this industry. Yeah, so I joined Belden three years ago as a product line manager, and uh, I had a lot of product management experience before and thought it was a great transition to Belden. And um, the reason I joined Belden is because Belden is a data transmission company. And at that, in my previous role in the manufacturing industry, I realized the importance of industrial internet of things. And I wanted to be in the center of the action and be part of the industry 4.0 and um, really try to um, re-innovate this industry. And there are a lot of opportunities to do things better. So I feel that um, Belden is at the cent center of that, being able to transmit data from the industrial edge all the way to um, the cloud for analytics and things like that. We're the one who can provide the infrastructure. It it's like the centralized nerve system. So that's why I joined Belden, joined this industry to um, be part of the 4.0. It's certainly a great time to be in the industry. There's lots of change and, you know, there's there's lots of movement and the, and the way things are working within the, the industrial process. But what would you mm -hmm. say, are, what would you say are the defining features for manufacturing world today? And what, what are the demands that being placed on manufacturers and engineers today? Right. Um, let me share with you some of the market trend. Right, so I wanted to talk about this industry 4.0 and industrial internet of things. As you can see, in the past, we have went through different generations of industrial revolution. The core of that is really to reduce costs and increase the standards of living for all. And it's, it's a very um, exciting initiative, generation after generation. In 3.0, we have invented uh, robots to do those repetitive work or something that's very difficult uh, operators, uh, it's very challenging physically. And now 4.0, the difference is instead of automating the motions, we're starting to think about what are the stories we can tell? You know, we have sensors, we have actuators, we have arms, uh, arms and legs, and we have nose and ears, right? What kind of story can we get from the industrial floor? And how do we put those signals together so we can automate the decision-making process. I think that's the key difference between 3.0 and 4.0. We're trying to understand what's going on and be able to automate decision-making and be able to put together the story. So that is one of the defining feature of the industry right now. Another one is ITOT convergence. Uh, businesses and enterprises you know, they have the operations side, they have the IT side, and traditionally they're very uh, siloed in two separate world because they have different priorities. For the IT team, you know, their priority is security and how do I manage the data most efficiently? For the operational technology team, they care about uptime and reliability and how do I optimize the efficiency on the factory floor? How do we um, make the best quality product with the least amount of time and resources. So very different priorities, but nowadays, you know, with the data infrastructure, with the industrial network, we're able to convert some of those OT signals, the 4 to 20 milliamp signals, starting to convert those into Ethernet IP. And we can start to get all of those um, information from all the way at the edge of our network which is, you know, basically our factory floor and be able to um, look, monitor different operations at different locations geographically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we can start to draw a pattern from it. So that's what we're saying the ITOT start to merge together and be able to get the industrial data and uh, do cloud analytics, do pattern recognition and make better decisions together. In terms of the 
the technology, a lot of what's happening within the world of um, Industry 4.0, the Internet of Things is becoming um, wireless. So what's the role that Ethernet plays in connectivity in, in, in the, the kind of like the new industrial outlook, if you like? What, 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 do, what does it do and that, what does it accomplish? What are the objectives of Ethernet? Right. So every time you have those wireless sensors or uh, machines or robots, you have to have the wireless access point. And, you know, you either um, connect through fiber or uh, copper Ethernet cables to those wireless access points. So the more wireless applications we have, that means it will require more wired cable to enable that. And that could be fiber or that could be copper. And the second part of that is we also have the technology called power over Ethernet, right? Yeah. So it's a very efficient way to provide not only uh, the data communication side, but also power those devices and give you very reliable um, uptime. Um, one cable that does all. And you can see that it's very, um, it's very widely used in the smart building applications, right? The TVs, the telephones. They're all power over Ethernet devices with Ethernet cable providing both. And the third component of that is on the industrial side. You know, we care about uptime and availability, right? Um, you know, if it's a signal that's good to have, like a temperature uh, reading or a meter reading, it's good to have and we can use wireless technology to get those information in. But if it's mission critical or time sensitive signals, I, I would recommend using wired uh, devices to pr provide that input uh, to give you the best uptime and reliability. And on the industrial side, we even go beyond that. We sometimes even build redundancy to make mm -hmm. sure that you pass uh, to get that information. That brings me on to the next question. There's a lot of talk about security of networks and there's a lot of uh, variables in play when trying to create a reliable network. So what are the aspects that are typically uh, most responsible for failures or constitute a high risk? Oh, I, I'm so glad you asked the question because working on the industrial side, we've seen a lot of misuse of commercial grade Ethernet cable on the factory floor. So let me share with you um, a graph. I think that will tell. So on this chart, you know, it tells you, you know, based on the data from Datacom magazine, uh, where are the typical network issues occur on the seven layer OSI model? So you can see that the physical layer is the single biggest area for improvement in terms of network reliability. 35% of the issue occurs on the physical layer. And we're talking about cables and connectivities yeah. and patch panels. This is the biggest area for improvement. So and and typically we see the investment on the software side, you know, it's it's much bigger than the investment on the physical component side. And we update our software every five years. And when you install the network in, you, you, you don't you don't think about it until something breaks. So sure. that is a big area of opportunity just to do the basic really well will help boost um, our reliability and availability for our network. So what steps um could an engineer take to minimize more risk, for example? Is there any advice that you would give? Yeah, um, I would say definitely apply, uh, understand the environment first, understanding what is the environment, what is the application, what are the different envir environmental stresses we're facing? Is it high temperature? Is it EMI noise? Is it um, you know, wa wash down water moisture or engine oil mist. What are the applications? Uh, you know, what's special about your application? And then specify the product that is ruggedized that can withstand those harsh environment. Um, there are also some products that have designed in reliability. So um, I can show you some examples, Greg, if um, this is a good time. So here is an example where we can build in some of the reliability in the design of the Ethernet cable, for example. So, um, you know, with the twisted pair, you know, the idea is that the pair is twisted so we can uh, exactly cancel the noise from the EMI perspective. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have Belden has a technology that's very unique. It's called bonded pair technology. 
and that enables um, the twisted pair to be bonded together. So no matter how you install it or how the vibration occurs over time on the industrial floor, the uh, centricity, the center to center distance remains uniform throughout the cable. And you can see some of the difference in terms of the bonded pair versus uh, unbonded pair cable difference in terms of impedance and return loss. It gives you optimal return, uh, minimum in return loss and best impedance performance if you're using a bonded pair technology. So there are some product um, that product differences that you can decide to improve the reliability in the in the field after installation. And another example is, um, you know, when we are talking about the physical layer, right? The field termination uh, is the single biggest area for uh, issue to occur. And we notice once you put in the cable, the, the the middle of the cable usually doesn't break. It's when we have to terminate it. That's yeah. when we introduce all the difference among the operators, the difference among the different experiences, products, connectors we're using. That's where the issue occur. And uh, we have a lot of different options within Belden. And I have to be honest, you know, there are uh, reliability differences with the options, right? For example, if you're using the punch down tool where you have to use uh, punch down every single conductor, there are eight different opportunities for failure, right? Yeah. And with vibration, um, you know, even though you installed it correctly the first time, with vibration over time, this conductor can become loose. And I've talked to so many um, network engineers they are talking to me about how the whole manufacturing line was down for four hours because of one single RJ45 failure. So this kind of issue occurs very, uh, very frequently. And um, a product I would recommend is the called the Industrial Ref Connect product. And as you can see with the design, it's, it's actually just a superior design that minimizes the variance you have amongst operators, amongst um, different experiences. I, I personally don't have any uh, five years of termination experience, but I can do a reliable termination every single time myself um, with just a few hours of training. And as you can see, you don't have to separate the pairs. You just need to untwist it to um, put in the uh, cable manager and the termination tool will create a very secure contact. Uh, it's called insulation piercing contact to ensure the reliability over time. And uh, if I stop sharing, I can show you some of the physical part as well. So I can show you some examples and this is um, the core that I'm referring to. As you can see, we we are able to minimize uh, the, the separation, the pair separation, because every time you separate the pairs, that will create uh, a variation in the impedance and increase the return loss. This one really minimize uh, the separation for the pairs. And uh, you can put the cap on and crimp it, and then you can insert it with either a jack or a plug. So it's very versatile. This core works for um, either a, um, a RJ45 uh, jack or a uh, a plug. So it's a uh, it's one core that fits uh, both type of connectivity. And also with time, as the RJ45 surface wear off, if you have to plug and unplug many times, you can simply replace the outer jack, and you don't have to reterminate the okay. cable. So it provides a lot of um, ease of use and reliability. Yeah. We uh, we work with uh, a person on Design Spark called Connector Geek, and he is always advocating, always think about the termination points, always mm -hmm. look at where it's going to be installed, look for the stress points, the vibration, because more often than not, those ex expensive failures will be something quite simple, which you've maybe overlooked. And he's always, as you mentioned on your slide there, the weakest link. He always refers to good termination removes the weakest link. So yeah, we we, we have a lot of uh, content from Connector Geek on that as well. He'll be really glad to hear that. Great. So, so um, we're talking about Ethernet. I, I want to know where single pair Ethernet fits in. So you mentioned power over Ethernet, which is great for, for mm. network power. But in terms of the industrial process side and sensor and getting information from sensor, Single pair Ethernet is playing an important role now as well. Could you just maybe explain a little bit more be between the two differences? 
Yes, definitely. You know, we have a lot of field bus, we call data bus, um, you know, that can reach longer distance than 100 meters. So the biggest uh, limitation for four pair Ethernet is that it's designed, the standardized um, committee designed that it's owning for 100 meters. And that creates uh, a big limitation because for especially a process industry, for imagine an oil and gas plant with a pipeline set across, um, you know, very long distance, you really can't get to your industrial edge. You can't get to those meters and sensors in the field with uh, 100 meters. So single pair ethernet uh, increase the distance to 1000 meters and it covers majority of those field bus communication protocols. And it can, and a lot of those sensors does not require a high bandwidth of data, right? So single pair ethernet designed, we're actually having three different versions. We have uh, 40 meter, 1000 meter. Um, I can show you, it may be easier. As you can see, we have three different versions of single pair ethernet. We have the short distance, uh, which is where single pair ethernet technology was uh, started. It's from the automotive industry. We're trying to brainstorm ways to reduce the weight of the cable in the um, in a vehicle to really optimize the gas mileage, right? So that provides 100 megabyte per second and very small footprint. And then we have the medium distance, which is ideal for a manufacturing cell, and that gives you one gigabyte per um, per second uh, of bandwidth and also provide power over data line. We call that Poodle. It's uh, it's power over data line. So it can power devices up to 50 watts. And the longest distance we have 1000 meter that can really reach the edge of our industries and that provide 10 megabyte per second of bandwidth and also 50 watts of power. So you can see those three different versions and solve a completely different problems. And I would say the 1000 meter single pair ethernet is really the one that will enable us to communicate all the way from edge to the cloud or via ethernet protocol. So that is a very exciting thing. And um, I visited uh, some plants in the past and I have seen those situations where they have one single plant and five or six different protocols that they have to maintain because of the different yeah. equipment. There's some of those are speaking Profibus, some of those use device net, it's very difficult to sustain that situation over the long term. So converting all the different protocols to a single Ethernet protocol is really going to help us improve the uptime and reliability of our industrial network. So I've heard um, an Ethernet network be described as, as like a, um, if somebody was planning like a, um, a series of highways or, or roads that you would need good traffic management, for example, for for Ethernet networks. So what considerations would an engineering team need to make to either improve one uh, or solidify an Ethernet network? Yeah, um, I would definitely go back to the environmental conditions and we use MICE, M-I-C-E, that stands for Mechanical Ingress climatic and electrical, basically remind our engineers of four different areas of potential issues in the environment. So understanding uh, what are the mechanical stresses, do we have uh, robotic applications that has repetitive motion, understanding climate, um, temperature, chemical that's uh, presented in our environment, um, those four different areas is uh, the focus that I would say to make sure that our pipeline for the data is secure and reliable over the design time. So if we consider future proof your Ethernet connection, for example, and you want to upgrade, I think there's kind of a lot of uh, scope for retrofit and small improvements will deliver big gains. What are the considerations that you would give, you know, for network upgrades and are there any particular products from your line card that you would recommend that people would or engineers would look at to to see ah here's a solution we can we can we can use with these products yeah definitely you know with the background of the industry 4.0 we're going to see more and more devices that needs to get um, the information to our backbone right so if i were uh, giving an advice i would recommend we use a cas6 or even cas6a ethernet cables 
to really make sure that you have the infrastructure in place for the next five or 10 years, right? Um, kind of future proofing is uh, to enable that highway for the data to travel to the cloud. So um, we have some product that we recently launched. I can uh, share my screen. I think that'll be easier. So we have um, some product all the way from the industrial backbone to you know the edge devices, either fiber or copper. So I would definitely recommend using uh, fiber for the backbone so that we have um, enough uh, bandwidth to get all those information communicated and also have a ruggedized solution with um, the different protections against harsh environmental challenges. So some of the fiber lines we have are, you know, um, those um, tree optic, uh, tactical fiber, and arctic fiber for cold temperature. So we have various different uh, industrial fiber offering for your backbone needs. And we also have Data Tough Cat 6A industrial ethernet that give you, you know, the the most of the bandwidth you will uh, you will need for the next 10 years, right? We have uh, products that is oil res, sun res, uh, with industrial grade PVC jacket, um, be able to provide you 10 gigabyte per second of bandwidth and 100 watts of power over ethernet. So some of those products I'll definitely consider uh, when we're building a brand new plant um, mm -hmm. to make sure it's ready for the, for the future. Great, so we've, we've covered a lot of um stuff around Ethernet today, industrial application, etc. There's a lot to be had for um, devising a robust Ethernet strategy and delivery of that Ethernet strategy with quality products and also, you know, making sure you've got the important things like you were mentioning there, uh, looking at 10 years in the future and making sure, you know, that to have a reliable system, you need to understand about vibration, um, the environment that it's gone into, and, and consider all those aspects to deliver a successful Ethernet strategy. I hope we can have you on Design Spark again real soon. And it's been a pleasure talking to you today, Sylvia. Great. Thank you so much, Greg. I appreciate this opportunity. It's great to, um, you know, be able to communicate with the industry and share some of the best practices we learned.